Hello, hello! A very enthusiastic welcome to one more episode of Baidu SciTech Roundup, where we bring you what's new in the fields of science and technology, and also the science behind the latest news of the world. So let's get started. Our first news of the day is about the Chemistry Nobel Prize of 2022. Now. Nobel prizes make headlines every year and 2022's Nobel for Chemistry is very interesting because of its practical applications. It was awarded for the development of click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry jointly given to Carolyn R Bertozzi, Morten Meldil and K Barry Sharpless. So, let's break down the science behind this. Click chemistry is based on the idea that larger molecules can be assembled by using smaller molecules as building blocks. You see this? Hmm. This is quite similar to how we use small pieces of Legos to make big structures. The smaller building blocks snap together quickly and efficiently to give the desired result. Hence the name Click chemistry. Do you hear the satisfying sound of ah, two Lego pieces snapping together? Or you could even think of a belt going into a buckle. So this particular click sound is the one being referred to in the name of this new branch of chemistry. But how is this different from the usual ways to make molecules? Well, in theory. We know that molecules can be created in chemical reactions. Two or more reactants react with each other to give the desired product. So, we should be able to make any kind of molecule, right? But this is not as straightforward as you might think. Many times, these reactants refuse to combine with each other unless extremely high temperature and pressure is applied to them. Sometimes they might combine, but not quite like snapping together. In fact, it might be so slow that it may take months to get the amount of product that is needed for large-scale applications. Furthermore, the reactants needed might be hard to obtain, or they might even be toxic, making them hard to handle. Now, even if all the above challenges are taken care of. It is generally very difficult to precisely control how the raw materials react, and we then could end up with a lot of unnecessary byproducts in addition to the desired products. Now, all of this makes creating molecules extremely challenging and time-consuming. So, to tackle this, one of our Nobel laureates, Dr. K. B. Sharpless, came up with the concept of. Click chemistry in 2001. Click chemistry enabled Dr. Sharpless and his group to simplify creation of molecules by making the process as straightforward as mm -hmm, Lego pieces fitting together. Using click chemistry, they improved and refined many chemical reactions. Now, one of these reactions was a very useful one: the synthesis of a chemical structure called triazole, which is used in pharmaceuticals, dyes, as well as agricultural chemicals. Now, while this made the synthesis of triazole fast and efficient, it was still not very precise and often needed specific and difficult conditions like high temperatures to work. So this is where our second Nobel laureate, Dr. Morton Meldil, came in. Both him and Dr. Sharpless's group independently came up with a copper catalyst for this reaction. This copper catalyst acted like a skilled hand joining the two Lego pieces together, doing it precisely and efficiently. With this catalyst, the reaction did not need any special temperature conditions. And a larger amount of the desired product was obtained too. 
This was so exciting that this quickly became a common chemical reaction for manufacturing triazoles. Next, the scientists wanted to see if it was possible to do click chemistry inside living organisms. They wanted to do this because click chemistry could be used to attach traceable molecules to living cells and track these molecules to study the cells. But the copper catalyst could not be used here because the amount of copper needed for the reaction would be quite toxic to the living cells. So, a different catalyst was needed. And since necessity is the mother of invention, this led to the development of bioorthogonal chemistry. But what is this? Bioorthogonal chemistry refers to reactions that happen at the surface of a living cell without affecting the cell's behavior. This has been developed by our third Nobel laureate, Dr. Carolyn R. Bertossi. She and her group conducted various experiments to find an alternative to the copper catalyst that could be used inside the human cells. They figured out that a class of chemicals called cycloalkanes could also act as a catalyst here. And now, this copper-free click chemistry could take place inside lab-based human cells. So, this discovery led Dr. Bertozzi to develop bioorthogonal chemistry, opening up possibilities to conduct chemical reactions to create molecules of our choice inside the body. And this opens up possibilities for creating medicines directly at the site of disease, for example, a tumor cell. This helps in preventing the side effects that happen when the medicine acts where it is not needed. So this is very useful in the development of cancer treatments. And as we discussed earlier, scientists can use bioorthogonal chemistry to track and study DNA and other different types of cells in the body. So, these three Nobel laureates have developed completely new fields of chemistry. Click chemistry and bioorthogonal chemistry, which are now being used in a way chemistry had never been used before. Alright, moving on to the next news from the field of astrophysics. So, recently scientists at the Astrobiology Center in Japan have discovered a super-Earth exoplanet that has the possibility of life on it. But wait, what is a super-Earth and what is an exoplanet? Well, an exoplanet is simply the term that we use for a planet outside our solar system. And a super-Earth is an exoplanet bigger and heavier than the Earth, but lighter than the ice giants Uranus and Neptune. Now, the question is, how did we manage to find this exoplanet that is so far away from us? Well, scientists are always on the lookout for life on other planets. Other than our Sun, our galaxy, the Milky Way, has about 100,000 million stars that may have planets revolving around them. However, about 75% of these stars are red dwarfs. Now, these kinds of stars are smaller and cooler than the Sun. But most importantly, they don't emit a lot of visible light. That is, the light that we can see. So, it is very difficult to see them, study them, or even find planets around them. The good news, however, is that the visible light is only a small part of the entire light spectrum called the electromagnetic spectrum. Red dwarfs usually emit more infrared, so they look much brighter when we see them using infrared light. Scientists at the Astrobiology Center in Japan developed a special instrument for the Subaru Telescope located at the Mauna Kea Observatory in Hawaii. This 8.2 meter telescope constantly studies the sky. With this special instrument, it can observe red dwarfs in infrared and look for signs of planets around them. And it has had very early success by finding a super-Earth exoplanet that 
has the possibility of life on it. So, this planet revolves around a star named Ross 508. Because of this, the planet is now named Ross 508b. The red dwarf star is very near to Earth. Uh, of course, I mean this in celestial terms. This is only about 37 light years away. The exoplanet is four times heavier than Earth. But the question is, how did scientists get to know that this planet might have life? Well, let's try looking at the planet that we do know has life. Yes, I'm talking about Earth. It is the only known planet in the solar system to inhabit life. One of the main reasons for this is the perfect placement of its orbit around the Sun. You see, if a planet is too far away from the Sun, it will be very cold. On the other hand, if it is too close, it will be very hot. At certain distances away from the Sun, it would neither be too hot nor too cold. Such distances lie in a zone around the star called its habitable zone. Now, when planets are in the habitable zone, just like Earth, there is the possibility of water existing in liquid form, which is one of the indicators for life to exist on that planet as well. Now, coming to our super-Earth exoplanet, Ross 508b, its orbit is elliptical. And as the planet revolves, its distance from its, from its host star changes. For some part of the orbit, it is located at distances which are in the habitable zone of the star. That means it is not too close to the star and thus not too hot. And not too far away from the star either and thus not too cold. Now, because it has the right conditions for water to exist in liquid form, scientists are eager to search the planet for water and life on it. Now, this is a really exciting discovery for exoplanet exploration. And scientists are looking forward to the telescope finding more potentially habitable planets. Are you excited to know if there is life on other planets? Comment below! And we will be back next week for yet another exciting episode of Baju Sidek Analysis. Until then, keep sciencing. And don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon.